What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Gibbon and today I'm going to be showcasing why Potion Master is one of my favorite heroes in Storybook Brawl. Potion Master just really allows you to play differently than almost any other hero because you get to see those two spells in the shop every turn. There's just a lot of wacky things that you can do, and we're going to be doing a lot of those wacky things this game. Um, obviously, it's good with Crystal Ball. We've explored that in the past. It's also pretty good at finding XP, which can be a lot of fun and one of the reasons that the Sphinx was kind of broken. But the other reason that I really like it is because you can find twice as many mix -a whistles and True Love's Kisses and just try to find some minions that are ahead of the curve earlier than the rest of the lobby. And when you combine that with XP, things get a little bit silly. Um, you also do get a little bit of strength in the early game by being able to find spells like Shrink Ray and Forbidden Fruit, though this Shrink Ray was off a, a Genie's Wish. Um, it is going to mean that we are able to purchase three units next turn. So that is sweet. And then obviously the plus one plus one that it gives you whenever you cast a spell on one of your units does, does kind of help you out as well. And uh, unfortunately, we are going to lose our first two combats, but now is when we get to use some of that econ. We'll start off by Shard of the Ice Queening on the uh, Sherwood Sure Shot, and that's going to give us a Mad Mim, which works pretty well with this Polywoggle. And then we'll pick up the Tiny, and this is kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> we can pick up one more unit here. Um, I totally didn't realize it, and I this this game was recorded a little bit ago, but I think it must have been because I purchased two units, and then I also cast a shard of the Ice Queen. Like, I already picked up three new units this turn, and just totally forgot that I could purchase another one. So the Baby Root or the Kitty Cup Purse, either of those would have been decent here, because uh, the Kitty Cup Purse could have gone in front of the Mad Mim, and uh, it probably I probably would have picked up the Baby Root, but uh, just... <laughs> Just don't spend my two gold there. Sure, why not? Uh, it was unfair that we got the uh, Shrink Ray anyways. And believe it or not, despite that mistake, this is the combat that we wind up winning. Um, as uh, we, we don't get the Polywoggle Slay, but uh, we're still able to do some nice stuff. And actually, kind of nice that we don't get the Polywoggle Slay. Because now we are going to be able to grab an upgrade on Polywoggle. We also get to grab Hermes Boots as our treasure so that is going to allow us to even be more likely to slay with the polywoggle and that's why i call them kermie's boots and uh do that little voice for them there because they're so good with polywoggle and then i'll go for a mix a whistle on the uh cindy to turn it into an upgraded vampire and i think i just want dancing sword here just to guarantee that this polywoggle or not guarantee, but make it a lot more likely that this Polywoggle is going to slay. Um, Spinning Wheel also has potential, especially as Potion Master, because you want to be casting those spells, but I do decide to go for the Dancing Sword here, ultimately. Another interesting choice is I could have just kept the mix whistle in the shop to cast on the Polywoggle this next turn, but I'm sure we'll be able to find more mix whistles and TLKs as the game progresses, because we're Potion Master and uh, should be should be easy enough. So let's see what we got. We got a Prince Arthur, and we already got a True Love's Kiss, and that is going to give us Angry. And here is where I decide that I'm not playing a normal game of Storybook Brawl. I'm like, okay, this is 3.1, and I've already got an upgraded Tier 5 unit. This is kind of nutty. Um, I'm kind of interested in, like, taking another Polywoggle, potentially, and maybe I'll do it for this turn. But in future turns, I really want to try to roll for another True Love's Kiss. I think that it's fine to pick up this Polywoggle here just for Econ. The important thing to know, with this upgraded Angry, I really can't lose for a little bit. And I'm going to be taking full advantage of that fact and just trying to play as greedy as I can for every other aspect of this game because this angry my opponent's got two humpty dumpties it doesn't matter i'm i'm having scrambled eggs right now for breakfast um this this battle's not going to be close to being close we're going to crack both of their eggs and hit my opponent for a nice chunk of damage too because uh 
this this upgraded angry is just way too much for our opponents to deal with in the early game. So there we go. There's some justice back on Merlin. We get a pretty okay unit in Lady of the Lake because it can pump up our angry. But I'm just going to try to find true love's kisses. That's... <laughs> It's really all that I'm doing here. Um, our treasures don't really point us in any particular direction. I'll go for a mix of whistle on the Lady of the Lake, and now if we find a shard of the Ice Queen, we could shard the Baby Bear, and that would be respectable. Um, I'm not even going to buy the chicken because I just want to try to find True Love's Kiss, and I'm willing to uh, basically roll down for it because it would be so sweet if we find it. And... Um, we do wind up finding some more polywoggles here, and I think I will ultimately just settle on playing another polywoggle, um, because nothing else is, is like that exciting to do. And then I think I should switch the polywoggle. Well, it's interesting. I could switch the polywoggle and the baby bear, but, um, same thing as earlier. It is 3.2, so... If Polywoggle, we wait with it and we slay with it next turn, um, that's totally fine. And again, I feel confident that we're not going to be losing with this upgraded Angry this early in the game. And that is going to hold true against this Loki. It's, it's still way too powerful. Um, so it's our only thing that's going to survive, but it's enough to pad our life total even so. So... Now I really want to find a True Love's Kiss, and with an upgraded Tier 6 unit, like, upgraded Angry, sure, it's good, and we could have just been steamrolling all of our opponents, and we can see there's, like, some other good units here. There's a Tweedle and a Crafty, um, but I, I don't think it's, like, enough direction. Um, you do see I go for the Mask Ball again here, just to continue playing, like, the weirdest game of storybook brawl that I can. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play this mask ball and purchase another tier five unit. Um, and uh, this board just continues to get even sillier as this game progresses. But if this polywoggle can slay, we'll get another tier five unit out of that. And I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what we're going for. At some point, we're going to definitely have diminishing returns, way too much tier five units. But Hopefully this angry is still enough for now to allow us to keep winning. And honestly, this lightning dragon is pretty good here too. And it does look like this angry, especially with the Lady of the Lake supporting it, will just be enough stats to get us to um, a, a win here against uh, Sharon. So yeah, again, looking for True Love's Kisses. It, it would, it's just such amazing direction, and that is uh, the main goal here. Lady of the Lake, we can see, like, now is no longer even exciting because we could just buy a Lady of the Lake. So let's mix a whistle that, see if we can make that into anything better. And Aeon is a pretty sweet one with Potion Master potentially to be able to find some cheaper spells next turn. That could be pretty cool. Polywoggle, sure, I gotta go for it again. We're, we're playing a silly game already. Let's pick up the Polywoggle. Now maybe next turn we could find another Polywoggle and um, get an upgraded tier six unit again. Why not? And let's grab an upgraded tier six unit right now as well by um, upgrading the Bear Stain. And Bear Stain along with Wombats in Disguise could be pretty good. It's also giving the Polywoggles plus four, plus four, uh, which is pretty silly. And going to mean that uh, those polywoggles actually have like a chance to slay themselves. Now I'm not, I don't need them to slay, but if they do, um, it could be cool. Oh, I moved them there. Oh, that's interesting. I guess we're on 4.1, not 4.2. So I do kind of want the polywoggles to slay. Okay, uh, misremembering that part a little bit. I I do remember that they slayed. I didn't remember if I wanted them to slay or not. Um, but both of the polywoggles are going to wind up slaying against my opponent, and we get a bunch more tier 5 units um, to uh, try to do some work with here. And the bear stain is not as strong as the angry, but it is still going to be enough to allow us to win this combat. And I don't know what we're doing now. Um, <laughs> we've got three tier 5 units and a tier 6 unit, and it's 4.2. 
if this isn't the weirdest game ever, um, it's certainly up there. Um, so I'm like, potentially do want some things to, to play around with this bear stain, though could also potentially take shard, um, could take princess peep and like some summons, those could go along with it. Could do another mask ball. There's two fives here, and we wind up running into a Nyan Sea Terror as well as a pumpkin. This is the patch where pumpkin was on five, but it's not going to be uh, relevant to this game. It's kind of interesting with Bear Stain, but I'm going to go ahead and take this tier five treasure, and we'll see what we can do with that. Hand of Midas, way too early for that. Helm of the Ugly Gosling is probably the pickup, but I'm going to wind up going for Mimic Chest because. Um, why not? This is already a just a super silly game. Let's go for the Mimic Chest. And one thing that we can kind of do with the Mimic Chest and the Boots is we can put the Wombats in slot 1 and the Bear Stain in slot 2. And putting the Bear Stain in front of the Lady of the Lake gives the um, Shoulder Fairies more stats but um, all of this is just very weird. We do get an animal out of the wombats in this in disguise, though, which is basically um, just insane and potentially enough to win this combat, though Sporko with a bunch of black cats is certainly a little bit scary. Though my opponent doesn't really have a back line. It's just these six power ranged units, and I think we can bully our way through those. So that is going to be a win against the second place person in the lobby. Believe it or not, despite all this silliness, we are still in first place in this lobby. And hmm, I think I think it's time to press our advantage. I think we take Wish Upon a Star here and try to can do, just get to tier six. That That's what everything's been about, this whole game getting tier six units out quicker. And I think we do that by picking up Wish Upon a Star and then probably taking Lancelot. Uh, we could we could gain a lot from grabbing some good treasures to double with this Mimic Chest, considering we are currently doubling um, like a treasure that doesn't do anything and a treasure that gives one attack. So, um, I mean, Boots, Boots definitely does do something, but doubling it doesn't do much, and um, Boots... Like, 50-50, Boots does nothing, you know? So, um, interesting to uh, even figure out if it does something or not. Shoulder Fairies is a really interesting one. Um, I still don't feel like I know what the comp is that we're playing, though obviously Shoulder Fairies does work well with Lancelot. Here's where I'm at, though. If we win this combat, I'm going to regret buying Shoulder Fairies, because then I could roll for sixes. However, if we lose this combat, then I would definitely like to have purchased the Shoulder Fairies, but I'm betting on no luck given here. And let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can find a win. The Wombats is going to get in and summon a Romeo. And how are we looking? How are we looking against my opponent? They've got a baby bear. But, I mean, our units are pretty big. I think we've got this. We just have to battle through my opponent's crafty and then also their ranged unit. But I think... We've got the stats here. We take out their range unit, and then we will be able to take out the crafty as well. With our Lady of the Lake not even close, going to get the win for that Wish Upon a Star. So now we're Tier 6. And there's some interesting options this turn. We could Evil Twin this Bear Stain. That could be pretty strong. To just have a bunch of Bear Stains, we'll figure out what to do with that later. But what's the title of this video again? Like, refusing to play a normal game of Storybook Brawl? I think that's it. Um, let's Evil Twin this Lancelot. And what I'm thinking, we can use the Robin Wood to help us get Lancelot treasures. And that'll work even easier because we're going to sell our other low attack units, the Wombats and the Lady of the Lake, to purchase the Robin Wood. So now the Robin Wood is going to land on the Lancelot because we're going to sell these two things. Once we activate our Lancelots, that's how we're going to scale Shoulder Fairies. And that's going to be our comp for the game. Lancelot being both sides of the coin on Shoulder Fairies. And um, that's it. That's the tweet. And uh, that's what I'm going to go for. I mean, I'm just like debating it, thinking it over a little bit, but that's the plan. And potentially should have spent a little bit 
more time thinking it over because um, the Robin Hood's actually going to buff itself. It's not going to buff the Lancelots. Um, so that's why I picked up the Lance, the Lancelot or the Robin Hood this turn uh, because I was thinking the Lancelots were going to get groaned, but that's not the case. Uh, the Lancelots are both going to slay, uh, and we are up against the ghost, so. It's not, the, it's not the worst thing in the world, but the Robin Wood did buff itself, <clears throat> which does mean that uh, we're, we're not getting those treasures just yet. So the way that we need to get these treasures is we need to now buff the Robin Wood. So we could do that with the Knighthood, or we could do that with the Hugeify. And Hugeify would be fine. We could also just Hugeify Lance. Like, that's a pretty straightforward way to play this, but... If we, it's like teaching Amanda fish, right? If we hugeify Lance, we'll eat for a day. But if we hugeify the Robin Wood, then we will get to, and if we knighthood the Robin Wood, then we're, then we're feeding the whole town. So that's, there you go. We got to go for the knighthood on the Robin Wood. Uh, that's going to put the Robin Wood up to, um, <clears throat> it'll give it plus seven, and then it'll give it uh, plus one more from the Potion Master. So it'll go up to 17, and it will be bigger than both of the Lancelots. But that's basically just what I'm checking here before I fully commit to this. So there's a little bit of a weird thing. It will buff the... It will buff the evil Lancelot, the Robin Wood will, at the start of combat, and it'll trigger that, and we'll get the treasure. However, if our other Lancelot slays... Then we're in an awkward position where we actually need to buff the Robin Wood again or buff the Lancelot. We'll have to buff one of those two things. We could lock the Hugeify just to play a little bit more on the safe side, um, but that's not the video that we're watching. We're, we're watching refusing to play a normal game of Storybook Brawl. So we actually defeat my opponent's Hippocampus at the start of the combat, which is pretty huge, and Lancelot gets taken down. So that means Robin Wood is going to be able to trigger onto Lancelot next turn, and we will be able to also toss the Dancing Sword to grab a mimicked Tier 5 treasure. And then next turn, hopefully, we will be able to do the same thing. And then we'll also, somewhere along the lines, be able to grow our Lancelots to start growing our Shoulder Fairies. Um, it's a weird one. And we're going to take some damage for our Dirtling now. But it could be really sweet. And <sighs> Hand of Midas is certainly interesting now that we're Tier 6. Evil Eye is also pretty good. I think the unit that I want is Baba Yaga. So I have to decide if Staff is going to be better to allow me to find more Baba Yagas or if I just want Hand of Midas so that I can just find Baba Yaga and grab an upgrade of Baba Yaga. And we find it immediately, so that's awesome. That is going to exhaust our Hand of Midas. But we've now created another issue for ourselves. Now Robin Wood is going onto Baba Yaga. So now we really need to find plus attack for this Lancelot. It's close, though. It, it, it is really close, and it just needs a little bit more to get over the hump. Uh, but once it does, we will be looking pretty decent here. And uh, I do think I want to sell something. Uh, wind up selling the Nine Sea Terror, but could also have sold the Bear Stain to pick up the Shoulder Fairies and give us a little bit more power in that way. And... Um, Definitely a weird comp, but now the idea, like I said, is activate this Lancelot eventually. If Lance slays, it goes up to 24. Is that right? So it'll be really, really close. Um, we'll be we'll be very close to, to getting that one done. Um, Bear Stain soaks up both of my opponent's Lightning Dragons, and Robin Wood shrinks their Hercules in the back. So that is going to be pretty good for us, though our Lancelot is unable to get the Slay. So we're going to have to find something, like if we can find a Merlin's Test, that'll give it plus 5, plus 5, because we're Potion Master. Uh, our evil Lancelot is continuing to grow, uh, but we are going to want some more stats on our good, our Lancelot Prime, uh, soon, if possible. So that's like the main thing that I'm actually rolling for right now, and it's weird, too, because this game is almost over. Um, I could take a Baba Yaga here, and then I only need 
the tiniest amount of stats on this Lancelot. I just have to give it plus one, plus one. So really any spell will work at this point. Uh, not mix a whistle because the, the unit needs to stay around, but if we can just roll and find like a magic research, can't cast Beauty's Influence, unfortunately, and uh, don't want to cast that on our evil lands because we want both an evil and a good, but Sugar and Spice is going to give us enough stats for our lance, which is really, really sweet. That's going to give us another tier five treasure to fill in that empty slot that we've got. And now we can hopefully start scaling our good lance as well and gaining some additional health on all of our shoulder fairies and on our lance. So that is the idea. Um, Evil Lance gets in and gets the Slay, and then Good Boy's going to get in, which is actually going to just barely prevent our Good Lance from getting the Slay as well. And this opponent has a lot of potential stats with the uh, Wombat, so I guess I'm happy enough here to just only take whatever this is. Um, 10? 13? Yeah, 13, whatever. We, we, can, we can lose... Um, no more combats. Um, that's uh, that's it, basically. And now I think I take the Staff of the Old Toad. Um, it's really weird that we have this Mimic Chest this game that really isn't doing much of anything for us. It's just giving us double boots. Uh, in hindsight, the, the Helm of the Gosling could have done a lot more and would have even triggered our Lancelots earlier, potentially, too. Um, so yeah, that would have been, that would have been, uh, much better for us, but we'll pick up a pair of Grim Souls this turn. That is not too shabby. And then I'll go for a free roll and I could sell three things to pick up shoulder fairies. So it's Baba Yaga. And then I don't think I want to sell these Grim Souls. I probably want to sell these tier six units that we spent so much time and gold to pick up. Uh, but now I can grab a tier 5 treasure and double it. So we could take Monkey's Paw, give everything plus 12, plus 12. That's going to help these lances to potentially slay and also grow the shoulder fairies a, a pretty considerable amount. So I do think that it is worth to take these Monkey's Paws here and uh, try to grow our lancelots in that way. And um, yeah, just kind of mixing around what order those Lancelots should be in, but otherwise nothing much is going to change. I really want to get more health onto our good Lancelot, so hopefully as many triggers as possible from these Grim Souls go on the good one. Unfortunately, they all go on the evil one, and our Lance also fails to slay against a Hippo Comp. So pretty unfortunate that um, we're really just going to get stats on the evil lance but uh hopefully we don't lose this combat now i think we'll be okay oh and other lance gets to attack again so that's nice that's going to give uh some more health to everybody for the next turn and for that next turn what are we looking for well this game's almost over so um, this could potentially be the finals right here though sharon hangs on with a little bit of health um probably want to find a drink me potion i'd love a gigantify on this lance you see me pointing to that but unfortunately we roll hugeify only um i'd also probably cast like any type of combat spell or something like that but not going to be so lucky this turn um i do see that this sharon was running a bunch of lightning dragons so i'm kind of like toying around with something like this they had cupid plus double lightning dragon so maybe i like backline my grim souls or something like that and um here i think i am just going to probably cast a pigomorph against this opponent and just be happy enough with that um try to um uh just just scam them in some capacity because uh this is the end game here could even consider locking the other pigomorph but i'm going to roll one more time and find a grim soul and now i just want to replace this staff with any treasure that can impact combat and unfortunately that's only moonsong horn uh it'll give my whole team plus two plus two but it's probably worth it just to get a few more stats just to make sure that i don't die on this final turn and um Sure, we can play Black Backline Grim Soul. It's it's uh we're not playing a normal game of Storybook Brawl. I'm refusing to play a normal game of Storybook Brawl. They do still have the Cupid, 
Um, but the Cupid's going to hit on the Baba Yaga, so it doesn't really matter too, too much. Um, and actually, my lances are big enough in the front line that they are going to get slays and survive, and then my Grim Soul is going to attack in. So it didn't really wind up mattering too much anyways, and... I think we've got enough stats here to, to battle through this pumpkin. I mean, we pigoed something. I think we probably pigoed another uh, pumpkin or something like that. Uh, and that's going to mean that we've got a bunch of stats. And unfortunately, because of my ordering, uh, Lance, the good one, isn't going to get a second slay. Uh, so could have benefited me to have those in the other order just to get a little bit more HP. But now we're in the finals. So not too shabby. Um... What are we looking for for this last turn? Well, I probably want... I mean, that's that could just be good enough of a spell. Like, it gives lands plus 5, plus 5, which gives the shoulder fairies plus 10, plus 10. That's probably good enough. And then um, I am considering this Princess Peep. There's also the Wombats in disguise that, uh, you know, we got rid of earlier. There is also Pumpkin. Um, but I think we don't have enough evil things. I think I just want to find, like, okay, a Medusa could be good. Um, Medusa or Cupid are probably like the main things that we're looking for. And I think this Medusa is going to wind up being actually pretty solid. Um, again, we could take like the pumpkin now. Uh, potentially that was the play. Sell the Grim Soul and throw another pumpkin in the back line. Uh, I don't think that that would have been horrible. Um, but I'm just going to roll and I'll lock a shoulder fairies. That's a bunch of stats for the next turn if we somehow manage to tie our opponent. Though I think that's impossible with this specific back line. Um, they get a pigomorph against us and their good boy plus bear stain plus echo wood. And honestly, they don't have that many stats, but the wombats being good and then summoning an animal definitely puts it over the top and i think they were going to win regardless but definitely not going to win after that fact and there was still even a chance had they attacked into the baba yaga there then the medusa could have scammed the echo wood but that's going to be it second place and honestly second place isn't that bad for a game where you can have this much fun and do this many silly things and refuse to play normal storybook brawl and still have such a good result. So there you go. Hope you had fun with this one. Hopefully it inspires you to also do some silly plays with Potion Master and in Storybook Brawl in general. But that's going to be it for me for this one. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm No Lex Given. Peace.